Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started with the third part of conservation biology phase two here. Uh, last lecture, we left off talking about prairie chickens and jaguars and how as populations get smaller and smaller and smaller, you lose genetic diversity. And that's a really, really bad thing. Um, even if you are able to rebuild a population, if you see the genetic diversity crash, it may not be viable in the long, long term. You know, if you're down to six individuals and then you rebuild from there, what kind of genetic diversity do you have? So think back to evolution is a thing we call genetic drift. Most specifically, it's a thing known as the bottleneck effect. That is not a healthy thing for any population and we see example after example of that when populations crash they lose genetic diversity even if they rebound it's usually not a sustainable rebound because of that lack of genetic diversity so okay so let's take a look at what is actually going on in the united states and also in illinois um, if we look at the united states as a country and we survey the species in the United States, we will have, well, currently we have 2,360 species that are listed as threatened or endangered. And we're going to go into these terms in just a few minutes here. So 2,360 species. It's a lot of species. And this is a spectrum. Plant, animal, fungi. We really don't have much knowledge about things like bacteria. Um, the proteists is very, very limited. So mostly it's plant and animal data. Uh, the challenge is there's still a lot of species we don't know anything about. We don't have information on them. So they could hopefully be stable or those populations could be endangered and threatened as well. And we don't realize it. So this number gives us a guideline, kind of a working number but it's unfortunately probably not even close to the real number. And as we talked before, what happens if those 2,360 species do go extinct? How many other species will feel that ripple effect and that lead to their extinction? So you can imagine that many parts in your car that have to be replaced or they're going to break or they're not going to work anymore. What's that going to do to the rest of the functionality of your vehicle? Now, in Illinois alone, we have 34 species that are currently listed. While that may not sound like a big deal, like, yeah, it's only 34. Consider 2015, we had 31 species. So sadly, our number is going up. Go back to the causes of extinction. Those causes are what are pushing these numbers higher and higher every single year. Now, the assessments on species status, whether they're threatened or endangered, are usually done on five-year intervals just because it's impossible to go out and survey every single year. There's too much work and not nearly enough support. So they're on five-year intervals for most species assessments. Okay, so, and we'll talk more about that with a conservation plan. So what does it mean when you see something on a list and it says it is threatened? So generally, when we indicate a species is threatened, your population is trending downward. All right, so you're trending downward, and what you need to do is implement a conservation plan. You need to protect that species, figure out what's causing the pop problem, and develop a conservation plan and get it implemented. Because if you don't, that threatened species, whatever it may be, is going to then move to the endangered status. Now when a species is endangered,
population is getting critically small, that your numbers are reducing. Okay, let me move some stuff here. So, okay, so when you hit the endangered level, um, your population is getting critically small, your habitat is reduced beyond maybe supporting the species, and protection is essential for species survival. If you don't do something immediately, that species is going to go extinct. And sadly, there is a point where you will see a species is reduced to a certain number and even if you put all the protections in place, it's not coming back. It's just too small. There's not enough individuals in that population to rebuild it. The habitat is just gone and it's not possible to restore it or bring it back. And that species is basically just waiting to go extinct. So I'm going to jump us out to a bunch of different websites. For those of you interested, play around on these sites, take a look at them. Some of the species status, when we talk about conservation, you identify it as a local status, like we can do Menard County, Sangamon County, Christian County, etc. We can do Illinois-based status. We can then expand out to federal status, and then we can expand out to global status. Some species, remember the term endemic? Well, that's only found in this particular region you may not have a global status because it doesn't exist anywhere else except that one particular region. So when you see the status, ask that question. Is this regional? My immediate region, is this statewide? Is this federal? Is this global? Depending upon the status, depending on the species, life history, and their habitat, etc., that will make a huge difference because if it's a global species, and you say, oh, shoot, locally it's nearly extinct, but the population is massive in another part of the world, that changes the conservation plan. If it's an endemic species and you're endangered, you're in a world of hurt because you can't go anywhere else and get more individuals to rebuild your population. It's a thing we call the source and sink when we talk about populations and uh, species recovery plans. All right, so let me jump you out to some websites show you some great sources of information, reliable. Don't just hit Google and go to Wiki and Bob's homepage. These are sites that have validity to them. So I would highly encourage you using these three sites anytime you need information on species assessments. Okay, so the first site I would encourage you to start with is Illinois what's going on in Illinois. And you can Google this. Just make sure if you do IDNR, you get Illinois Department of Natural Resources, not Iowa or Indiana or Idaho or et cetera. You gotta make sure you're in Illinois if you're talking about Illinois. So Illinois has a species protection board. It's part of the Department of Natural Resources. Job opportunities here, guys. Check it out. You need a background in biology. I would encourage specifically conservation biology, but you molecular folks, you're part of this. Give me a molecular analysis of these individuals or these populations. Are they the same species? Are they different species? That's how we're gonna identify if this is endangered or not, because you may run a molecular analysis and find out, wow, there are like 300,000 of these things in Carbondale area, and there's 300,000 in Springfield. Well. That population is pretty big. It's the same species. They're just in different locations. Anyway, Illinois endangered species. Go in here, and what they have down here is a list of endangered and threatened species in Illinois. Now, you can search just by the state, all the species. You can do it by the county. So you decide. But let me jump in here and take a look at it by the county. All right, so let me, I'm gonna zoom down real fast. Close your eyes if you get seasick easily. 
and there's a lot of stuff here, so bear with me. It's alphabetical. Okay, oh, almost there. Okay, I think I'm going to be sick. All right, oh, Sangamon. Okay, here's our list of Sangamon County species. These are the species, plant and animal, that are considered either endangered or threatened. LE, least endangered. LT, least threatened. So Kirtland snake, threatened. So then you go, when was it last seen? 2017. Okay, it's, it's only about three years ago. It's possible they're still out there. Um, bunch flower. Ugh. 1955. That was the last time we saw that flower. This ornate box turtle, 1978. So a total of 18 species just in Sangamon County. So the idea here is being more familiar with what is in our backyard, what is in Illinois, in our given county, and then what can I do? So this one was updated July of 2018, so it's about two years old. Um, again, every, about every five years it's reassessed, depending upon the species and the resources available for it. But least endangered, or listed as endangered, listed as threatened. That tells us the status of the species. All right, so this is Illinois. Uh, let me close this one. Let's get to, all right, now if you're looking at federal, well, I want to know what's going on across the state or across the country. This is the one I would use, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Oh, not that, not that. Get out. Sorry. Too many tabs. All right, so use the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. So your database is now going to get much bigger because you're looking at the entire country. So you can look at threatened and endangered animals, threatened and endangered plants, what's going on. I could search by state. I could search by species. Lots of different ways to search. So if I had a species in Illinois that I was concerned about, And I want to know what's going on with that species across the entire U.S. They say, okay, across the U.S. doesn't look like it's a big deal. So other parts of the U.S., it may not be a big deal. Sometimes we don't have larger databases and research showing us what's going on. This is the range of that snake. So we go, okay, do we have enough information? So it doesn't look like across the entire range we've had, we have enough information for the whole range. We know in Illinois what's going on, but we don't know this bigger picture. So this is where you start to network and, again, pull together information across the bigger picture of the species range and get an idea of what's going on with that species across the entire range. Sadly, we just don't have the resources to know all this information that we need. So, okay, uh, last one here. Oh, this is known as the IUCN Red List. This is a global list of species. So you can come back in and do the same thing, search for this particular species. You may find out that the Kirtland snake is endemic to the Midwest. We're not going to find it in China, Japan, Asia, parts of Asia, Africa, etc. Other species that are global species will be listed here. So all sorts of information here if you're looking at the bigger global picture. So globally, 31,000 species threatened with extinction. Out of the assessed species, 41% of amphibians are threatened. Mammals, conifers, birds, sharks, rays, etc. So it gives you an idea of what's happening globally when we look at this. There are some great things happening, some bright spots, but there's also, unfortunately, a lot of, a lot of global concern. So use these as good resources for this information.